Lord, let your word pierce our hearts. Yes. Good yes. ground that it goes into, that it brings forth a crop, oh God, mm-hmm. and that we can leave here mm-hmm. talking about and yes. telling other people Come on now. about the word today from our dear sister. Hallelujah. And we just thank you for what thank you're going to do. We just thank you for what you're going to do for us. Well, for your glory, Lord, for your for glory. Your honor. In Jesus, In Jesus' name. name. Hallelujah. Glory. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Let's give a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, you are worthy, Lord. Worthy, worthy, worthy. We worthy. Your on this day, Lord. 
thank you, Jesus, for the ground that we are here to cover. Lord God, I thank you, Lord God. I'm going to open up, Lord God, in prayer, Lord God. Dear Captain Father, I come humbly thank you. before you. Yes, in the Lord. mighty name of Jesus, Jesus, Lord God, I invoke your presence, Lord yes, God. Lord. Let it pierce every heart and every ear, Lord God. Let it be demonstrated in their lives, Lord God. Let the word be amplified in their ears, Lord God. Let their lives be changed when they leave this building, Lord God. That their lives shall never be the same, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for humbling me and using me as your vessel, Lord God. Increase me that I may decrease in the flesh and exalt your name on high. That they will see only you, Jesus. Only you, Lord. Lord God, I thank you for the opportunity to glorify your name. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. slow it down. I'm going to take you to the scripture text of Psalms 107, and I'm going to lay the foundation, and then we're going to get it to the meat of the word. Amen. Amen. Psalm 107, verse 29. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When everybody have it, say amen. Amen. Remember, the title is Storm Riders. Psalms 107, verse 29, in the King, King James Version, it reads, He make up the storm. You can read with me on the count of three. One, two, three. He make up the storm a calm, so that the waves thereof are still. Do we got that, everyone? All right, let's read it again. Y'all still fumbling? Because I want you to receive this. This is for you. Psalms 107, 29. He maketh the storm a calm so that the waves thereof are still. If you remember last time God had me before you, he gave me about the waters and about the floods. I'm going to take you over to Matthew, the 8th chapter, we lay in the foundation. 8, 23 to 24 verse. Matthew 8, 23 reads, And when he was entered into the ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves. But he was asleep. He, meaning Jesus, was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Save us, we perish. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful, ye of little faith? Then he arose and he rebuked and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Amen. Remember the title is Storm Riders. Have things in your life ever rose up so great that you thought it was going to take you over? That you thought it was going to mentally and emotionally take you out? But you know what? I'm here to tell you that it's not going to take you out. It's not going to take you out. God has 
has equipped you with enough to rebuke the storm. Right. Don't allow your emotions lead you and control your decision. God called you to rebuke it, and he has given you the power to do so. Some of us are praying and asking God to handle a situation, and God is saying that I have given you power to rebuke that situation, that you have the power to do that. The Holy Spirit gave me the definition of a storm rider versus a storm chaser. Mm. We may have heard the word storm chaser. A storm chaser is a person uh, who travels to locations where a tornado is or severe weather. They go looking for the storm. Okay? But guess what? We're not storm chasers. We're not going looking for trouble. We're not going looking for the storm. Unless that's what you about, then that's a different story. Some people look for trouble. I don't look for trouble. I ain't going chasing no trouble, and I don't want no trouble chasing me. But what I can tell you, what I come to tell you, is that I'm a storm rider. You a storm rider. A storm rider is a person, a ride where others would drown in, you rode it out. <laughs> They ride the storm, and they go to dissipate the storm. Right. What do that word mean? D-I-S-S-I-P-A-T-E. Mm -hmm. Disappear or cause to disappear. We are here as the body of Christ and saved Christian to dissolve the situation. We are not chasing the troubles down. We are here to alleviate the trouble. We are not working in our own flesh. We're working in the power of God. So therefore, we don't operate under our emotions. We operate in the spirit of God. Amen. Stop letting what is supposed to be temporary in your life lasts forever. Dry your tears. The Holy Spirit say, dry your tears. Wash your face. That's right. Wipe your face off. Wait a minute. Because I done had to dry my own tears plenty of night. I done had to dry them myself. My pillow may have caught the tears. But the Holy Spirit say, dry your face up. Wipe your face. Weeping may endure. Wait a minute, back up. Okay, Holy Ghost. I have cried my last tear last night over that situation. Can we repeat that as an act of faith? That you have cried your last tear. Say, I have I cried my last tear over that situation. The Holy Spirit gave me weeping may endure for a night. We all heard that. Hallelujah. But guess what? The Holy Spirit put a spin on it. I was excited. Right. He said weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Yes, now let's go back a little bit. He said it may endure. He said weeping may endure. Not that endure. It may endure. And then he added, the teacher in me says, he put that but on there. But is a conjunction. It doesn't mean it has to last. It's a choice. So it's a choice if you want the joy to come in the morning. It's a choice if you want the weeping to endure. It's your choice. It ain't nobody else. So what have you come to do? He was talking to me. I took it personal. He said, what you gonna do, LaVisha? You gonna keep on weeping and endure for a night? Or is your joy gonna come in the morning? I said, hallelujah, hallelujah. What took others out, you rolled it out. You survived the storm because you are a storm. Yeah. But joy yeah. is a short thing. Yeah. It's something else today. 
morning. So even in the midnight hour, when you're going through, I hear somebody say he turned it around.
of God cannot, cannot cohabitate, live together, okay, with the spirit of the devil. I don't know how you're doing it. Some people do it very well. We call it faith phony all that. Okay? But that's not a child of God. That is not a child of God. We are not cohabitating and living with the devil. You're going to make a choice. Okay? If you're filled it, you're filled with the Spirit of God. The devil ain't, isn't in you. Okay? Ain't, isn't in you. It shouldn't be. We have prayer people ministers here to help you along your journey. Yeah. Which means in order to mess with your mind, he has to mess with your situation mm. and circumstance. Yeah. Hear me by the spirit. Yeah. But we, I, don't live and go by our situations. Wow. We walk by faith. Yeah. Even though we going yeah. through storms yeah. in life, we are still projecting a praise. We still project and walk by faith and go through as a Christian. Are you catching it now? Are you catching it? Okay. You cannot cohabitate with the devil. You cannot let the enemy get into your mind. He deals with your situations and then he wants you to operate out of your emotions. And then you start crying and falling out and acting like you can't handle anything. You can't handle the pressure because I told you you were a storm rider. You're not a storm chaser. You are not chasing trouble and trouble ain't chasing you. But what you are going to do is you're going to look at the situation and survey it out. And then you want to assess it and deal with it. Like he ordered you and gave you power to do. It's not a weak soul in a Christian faith. We're not weak. I don't know who told you that. But we're not weak. We're strong in the power. So God is saying it's time. My brother came uh, last Sunday and said, where is the power? That's what he said. That's what he said. So God is saying that it's time. It's been time. It's already in you. Okay? All you have to do is start speaking it and command that storm to go in your life, your cousin life, your sister life, your family, your husband, whoever ain't operating and flowing in the spirit of God. Okay. You command it to come to order. In the mighty name of Jesus, it be done. Okay? okay? I don't play with the devil. Okay. I ain't playing with you. I ain't going to dinner with you. I ain't playing with you. Yeah. You gonna come in night, come in order, or go on somewhere and shake the dust off my feet because that's what the word said. That's what it said. Yeah. I don't have to associate myself with fools. Yeah. I don't live and go by a, 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 a situation. We go by revelation. And revelation says... In spite of my situation, uh-huh. in God, I trust. That's what you signed up for. When you went down in that water, when you came down that aisle, you said, in God, I trust. That's right. You said, in God, I trust. That's right. You spend that dollar that say, in God, I trust. Yeah. But are you trusting in God? Yeah. Is your faith in that money to get you out of the situation? Because I know so I'm talking to myself when I got sad and angry, go shopping. Okay? But guess what God wanted me to do? God wanted me to get on my knees and come to him. Not to the department store and spend his money because I'm upset. Because that was another example of sensory. Okay? That was my emotions. So I was acting out of emotions. Okay? So God said, that's not what we do. That's not what we do. Okay? God is good. I have no bad message. All right. So here goes the fun part. Hallelujah. Here goes the fun part. 
Look at God. It's all awesome. yeah. my time. Elder, I did, didn't I? Amen. God is so good, and that's Amen. what God Amen. gave me. Amen. We're going to play the song one more time, but before I play the song, I know it to be true. I know it to be real. I prayed. I fasted. I don't have to give you all the particulars, but out of respect, I want you to know that I'm serious about my relationship with God. Amen. And I lay prostrate before him, and the other night I woke up, and I had a dream. And the dream was, the meaning, the interpretation was, God told me to tell you this. Someone, maybe two, maybe three, mm -hmm. you have left a situation and you have been moved to another location. Mm -hmm. It could be work-related. It could be a house. You thought that it was sabotage. Mm -hmm. You thought that you didn't have the tools or the equipment to do the job that God has called you to do. Mm -hmm. But in the midst of that, <clears throat> yes. God wants me to tell you that people are receiving you. They are receiving what you have. Even though that you may feel that you are not equipped. God is saying that you are equipped. And that by you being equipped, people's lives will be changed. Because it's already inside of you. So the dream was of sabotage. Mm -hmm. And you may feel sometimes that you may be sabotaged. Mm -hmm. But God wants you to know that you are equipped yeah. to do what he has called you to do. You may not have the paper or a uh, uh, director, boss, or whoever, the degree. It could be a degree. Mm -hmm. It could be just knowing who you are in him. Yeah. So the bottom line is that God wants you to be confident okay. in knowing who you are in him. Yeah. Be confident. Don't think that you're not equipped to do the job that God has called you to do. I know I'm talking to someone, two yeah. or three, yeah. because I dreamed this. And I woke up sweating and crying out and said, oh my God, this is for the body of Christ. Yeah. This is for the people of God. You are equipped to do what God has called you to do. Mm. You are equipped. So God wants you to speak to that storm. Take power over your life. Know that you are a storm rider. You're not a storm chaser. Okay? You are going to solve the situation. Mm -hmm. You're going to do what you're called to do. Amen. And you don't need no one's help but God. Amen. Because I told you in the word that you have, as long as you have God, you have everything. You may think that you're all alone and you raising the kids by yourself and you doing it all alone. But God say, make that no never lie. Mm -hmm. Because you have everything in me. Mm -hmm. And what you do, what you've been called to do, right. everything else going to fall in order. Yes, it will. Because a lot of times we look at what she ain't doing, uh, what he's not doing. Mm. I need his help. I need her help. Or this will be like this and this will be like that. But God say, why don't you do what I called you to do? <laughs> and once you start doing what I called you to do, you're going to see what I call you, them to do. And y'all can maybe do it together. Work it together. Okay? okay? But are you ready for that truth? Mm -hmm. When you have to look at yourself in the mirror yes. and say, I am the one that needs to be changed. Yes. Are you ready for the real transformation of God in your own life before you transform somebody else's life? Because you cannot speak into another vessel until God has spoken to your vessel and until you obey what he has said to you. Because God, I told my sister on the way here driving, I said, my brother was sharing his testimony last Sunday, and I said, a person can't change unless they want to change. Yes, right. No matter who pray for them or how many people lay hands on them. Yes, you can rebuke them all you want. You can walk through your house and play the church music and say it's going to change him or her or your children, and ain't nothing going to happen until they want it to happen. Okay. Okay. So I leave you with this. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, I ask that you seal this word. I ask that the ears shall hear and receive what was spoken by your vessel. 
Lord God, I thank you for the opportunity to give your word and your message. Yes, yes. To let the people know that they are storm riders. What took most people out, they have survived it. That they are more than conquerors. I came back to let them know to come out of hiding. That the sun is shining and you want to shine through them. That you want to use them right where they're at. They may feel like they don't have it all together and they are not equipped. But Lord God, you are here now telling them that you are enough. Who told you you wasn't enough? You are equipped. Yes. You have the power and do what I've called you to do. Right. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord God, for every soul that is under my voice that had came today that was meant to hear this word. Yes. That you are not a storm chaser. You are not chasing trouble. You are a storm rider. And if you feel that in your life that you are in a storm right now, mm. if you feel that you need some help, Riding out that storm. If you feel like you're drowned and you just can't fight it by yourself, yes, sometimes that happens. But guess what? We have ministers here. We have elders here. We have people of God that love you and that will help you and say, I told the storm. And I'm going to leave you with this in the mighty name of Jesus. If you feel weak, if you feel like you're not equipped, I want you to make your way to the altar for prayer. Aisha, you could sing, um, play the song. As you read and listen to this song, I want to invite you to get prayer. If you have felt like you're in a storm and that you need help and that you need just a helping hand, just someone to touch and agree with you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you. The ministers are here and they will wait on you as you listen to the word of God and this message in the name of Jesus. Even if you are in this house and you are a member or a minister or an elder, it doesn't matter. You know what you need from God right now. You are safe here. This is a safe place. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for your attention and your time. In the name of Jesus, amen. Glory to God. Glory to God.
receive, 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 receive. You see that? It's yours, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours. It's yours.
Hallelujah. 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 Hey, boss! 
Praise the Lord. Oh, 
what he tells you. Yeah, yeah. Amen. So when I talked to this beautiful soul here, she hit everything on the head that I've been praying and asking God for. So I knew this was confirmation. Yeah. I have a sister who is um, has terminal cancer. Mm-hmm. And I had stopped speaking to her uh, 2015. Wow. Yeah. She hurt me. Hurt me.
mess it all a little bit. Come on, y'all. See? Happy birthday. Come on. Come on, 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 come